Good day, everybody. My name is Brad Langdell, and I'm hoping this physics I'm talking to you about today is not going to seem like I'm just talking Greek to you, although we are going to talk about a Greek symbol, the Greek symbol alpha. Uh, and I want to introduce to you a type of problem called a proportionality problem, is what we call them in our class. Uh, I introduced these in Unit B of Physics 20. We do them in Unit C and D as well. And you're going to recognize these types of problems when you're doing an assignment or a test, because they're going to contain words like doubles, triples, halves, quarters, increases or decreases by a factor of some amount. So maybe increases by a factor of seven or decreases by a factor of four, something like that. You'll also notice that these types of problems don't often have a lot of numbers in them, like uh, you know, mass is equal to five kilograms or something like that. So when you see those keys, you know you're going to be dealing with proportionalities. And we're going to use this cute little guy here to help us solve some of these problems. So I just pulled out a question here. A uh, box has a weight of five new, uh, 500 newtons on Earth. If the box is moved to a planet with a mass five times larger than the Earth and a radius half as large, find A, the mass of the box on the other planet, and B, the weight of the box on the other planet. This is kind of a loaded question, actually, because not only does it deal with proportionalities, it also de deals with the difference between mass and weight, which is pretty important. Remember, mass stays the same everywhere in the universe, but weight can change depending on the gravitational field you're in. So this is actually kind of a, an extra bit to this question, which is good if you're reviewing Unit B in Physics 20. So let's start with A. What's the mass of the box on the other planet? Well, what do we have given? We've got the weight of the box. And you might remember the weight is really just the force of gravity acting on an object. Okay, so we have force of gravity and we're looking for mass, we've got a really simple equation that ties together force and mass. It's just Newton's second law. And I've written the acceleration in this case as the acceleration due to gravity on Earth because we're talking about the weight on Earth of the box. So if I want to rearrange that, mass is the force of gravity divided by the acceleration due to gravity. 500 newtons divided by 9.81 meters per second squared. We can pull out our calculator, see what we get there. I'm expecting uh, my answer to be in units of kilograms, so it looks like we're going to get about 51.0 kilograms. And that's the mass of the box. Like we were saying earlier, it doesn't matter if that box is on Earth or on some other weird planet or in the deepest reaches of outer space, its mass stays the same. Now, the weight will change, because weight depends on what planet you're on how strong the gravitational field is. So to find the weight, we can do proportionalities. Again, let's look at what we have for information for the second part of the problem. We still have force of gravity. We also have mass, and we've got the fact that it's five times larger. And we have radius, or the separation between the two objects. And uh, we have that that's half as large. So the words five times larger and half as large are indicating to me this is a proportionality problem. When you're solving a proportionality problem, you still need a formula to work from. And based on the information given here, I know that we're going to have to use Newton's universal law of gravitation. Because we've got masses, the mass of the box and the mass of the planet, and we've got a separation. We're looking for a force of gravity. When I'm doing a proportionality problem, here's all I have to do. I'm just going to take that equal sign, and I'm going to replace it with the Greek symbol alpha, which means is proportional to. I'm looking for the force of gravity and how that changes, so I'll leave that as an unknown. And whenever we get a variable that doesn't change, I substitute that into the equation as a 1. I don't actually write that the value of the uh, universal gravitational constant is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 27. I'm actually just going to put in a 1. Same thing for mass 1. I'm going to assume mass 1 is maybe the mass of the box. It doesn't change. Mass 2, it says, has gotten 5 times larger. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a 5 in for the mass 2. 5 times larger, uh, that's what I'm going to substitute in. And for my radius, it says it's gotten half as large. So in place of the radius, I'm going to put in 1 half. You could have also thought of that as uh, 2 times smaller. It's another way that could have been written up here. Instead of half as large, it was 2 times smaller. We'd still put in 1 half. And please make sure you're squaring that value of r squared, just like the formula tells us to do. So now we can go through and we can actually solve this. Uh, in the numerator, we have 5. I should put a proportionality symbol in there. 5. And uh, 1 half squared is 1 quarter. 
So that's 20. Now, what does it mean that the force of gravity is proportional to 20? And why are we putting those proportionality signs in? What is the difference? Um, why do that? Well, I do that so that it reminds my kids at this last step that the force of the gravity uh, acting on this box is not 20 newtons. Okay, it's not equal to 20 newtons. It's proportional to 20, which means that it's 20 times larger than it was to begin with. So if this answer would have come out to 1 over 20, it would mean it's 20 times smaller, 20 times larger than our original force of gravity. So now when I actually go and calculate the force of gravity, I'll take the original one, which is 500 newtons, and I'm going to multiply it by 20. This has gotten 20 times bigger. So that's going to be 10,000 newtons, or 1.000. Times 10 to the 4 newtons as our new force of gravity. So the weight of the block or the box on this other planet is 1 times 10 to the power of 4 newtons. And we worked that out with proportionalities. It wasn't too bad to do. We just had to make sure we were using the proportionality sign instead of the equal sign. That helped us remind uh, ourselves at the end that this wasn't actually our answer. We had one more step to go. And I just put in a 1 for any variable that doesn't change. And the variables that do change, I write in how much they change by. If you want to see some more proportionality problems, check out my website at ldindustries.ca.